Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Nobrega and I'm from the University of Minho in Portugal. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be part of this online international meeting for users of OpenFOAM that is being organized by Joseph. Uh, uh, I, I have to con congratulate Joseph for the, the, the organization of the meeting that will for sure contribute for to, to further disseminate OpenFOAM. Uh, the work I'll present uh, today is uh, related to the application of OpenFOAM uh, or the development of tools based on OpenFOAM to design, to support the design of polymer processing tools. In this case, uh, in this specific case, profile extrusion dies. This is the outline of the presentation. I'll start with a brief introduction and motivation of the work we've been doing. Uh, then I'll describe the design methodology and the numerical modeling code, the adaptations we had to, to make to open foam uh, solvers, standard solvers, to be able to uh, uh, use it to support the, to model the flow of polymer melts. Uh, and, and then went on the case studies uh, that will start by the polymer rheological characterization. We did to obtain the appropriate uh, material uh, constitutive models. Uh, then two applications to on the design, one related to geometry optimization, the other one related to boundary conditions optimization. That is some, something that can be uh, replicated experimentally. You'll understand that when I present that case study and uh, the presentation will end with some conclusions. This is a typical uh, profile extrusion line. Uh, the, the polymer pellets are inserted on the hooper, on the extruder, that has the main function of melt, pump the material through the extrusion die. So the extrusion die is the tool that shapes the profile uh, to dimensions, uh, to a geometry close to the final one. And then we have a cooling section, calibration cooling section, whose main aim is to remove the heat, solidify the profile. And finally, a whole off system that defines uh, the, the, the production velocity. And uh, finally, a saw that will cut the material, the profile into the desired uh, lengths. Uh, th these are typical products for uh, profile extrusion lines, profiles, constant se section profiles. There are many applications that, uh, there are many uh, uh, areas where these profiles can be applied, ranging from else to con building, uh, building construction, and so on. Uh, this presentation will focus mainly on the work we did to support the design of extrusion dies. Uh, why, why it's important to design properly a, a profile extrusion die? A typical profile is illustrated here on the on the left image, and uh, it has, it contains different uh, thicknesses. So there are thicker sections, thinner sections, and the material tends to accumulate on the thicker sections. And when that happens, we, we, we cannot obtain the desired profile because the velocity distribution, the flow is unbalanced. Uh, what we'd like to do is to design the, the tool, uh, define the processing conditions in order to obtain a balanced, a balanced flow distribution. Uh, that will allow to obtain the desired profile. Otherwise, that cannot be achieved. Uh, in order to, to do that, we, we start by uh, dividing the outlet cross-section of the profile into subsections, into elemental sections and intersection, intersection sections. Uh, we use those sections to monitor the flow distribution through an objective function. And for each of the subsections, we compute an objective function uh, that whose expression is given here. It's, a, it's, a, 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 it's related to the uh, uh, state of unbalance, unbalancement, and it will reach a zero value when the flow is perfectly balanced, which means the average velocity in each of the subsections in each subsection is equal to the global average velocity of the profile. Uh, this, this function can, can, uh, can have negative or positive values depending on the, on the, 
uh, if, if we have excess of flow or reduced flow in the, in the specific section. But in order to evaluate the performance of the tool, we compute the sum of the absolute values of the objective function that uh, should reach zero for perfect flow balance. Uh, and uh, it will allow, allow us to evaluate, quantify the performance of a specific design. This is the methodology we follow. Uh, as described before, we start by the division of the flow channel uh, outlet cross-section into sections. Uh, then we generate the geometry. For that, we have been using FreeCAD uh, that mainly allow us to, to, to generate all uh, the geometries we, we, we have been uh, dealing with. Uh, then the geometry the, uh, uh, is exported to Salome mainly to perform the division into uh, of, of, the, of the outer surface into different regions, into different patches in which we'll apply different boundary conditions. The mesh is then generated in SnapyX mesh and we use open foam to model the flow inside the flow channel. Uh, for that, we need the, the biological data for the material, the material model uh, that is obtained using uh, uh, rheological, uh, rheological characterization. Uh, after modeling, we check for flow balance, if it's uh, 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 balanced or not, the, if, if the flow distribution has to be improved or not. We use the, the tool patch integrate to obtain the flow in its, in its subsection and, and the respective average velocity. A and uh, uh, and if, if the flow is not balanced, we have two options to, 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 to design uh, the tool. Either we modify the geometry to uh, 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 aiming to improve the flow distribution, or we modify the, the boundary conditions. And I'll show you afterwards why that might work or might help to balance the flow. Uh, but we have two case studies uh, in, the, in this presentation. and. Uh, in each one, we'll use one of the approaches. And we'll iterate until the, the, the flow is balanced. Uh, in order to, to be able to, to model the problem, the, the polymer melt flow in open foam, we had to change it. And we started from simple foam uh, solver uh, that solves uh, uh, flow of, uh, of, uh, of generalized Newtonian fluids Incompressible, incompressible flow of generalized Newtonian fluids under hydrothermal conditions. But in order to be able to model properly the flow of polymer melts, we need to add the energy equation. That is a, a, a quite simple step, uh, uh, widely documented in, uh, in several tutorials. Uh, and we added also the, the viscous dissipation term in order to, to account for the, the uh, dissipation of energy uh, that is generated when we are dealing with polymer melts that are very high viscous materials. Uh, this is the energy equation that ha had to be programmed. And for the constitutive model, we use the bird uh, uh, model coupled with the Renius law to, to that will al allow to um, account for the effects of both the shear rate, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the shear rate and the temperature on on the shear viscosity. And uh, this is the, the uh, temperature shift factor that is used in the, in the expression of the, the shear rate viscosity in order to uh, account for the effects of temperature. Uh, in order to perform the characterization, and currently we are already on the case studies, in order to perform the characterization, we have to, uh, we, we use the uh, polycarbonate material that was employed in both examples we're going to, to illustrate. And, uh, um, and and for that, we used a parallel plate rheometer and a capillary rheometer uh, in order to obtain points, experimental points, uh, of, of the, the flow curve, uh, flow curve vis shear viscosity versus shear rate uh, uh, for different, three different temperatures. And we used the, the, the processing, the, the recommended processing condition uh, processing temperature for polycarbonate, the, for the reference temperature, and in order to, to 
quantify the effect of, te of temperature, we, we also perform the, the, the characterization at two different temperatures. Uh, we fitted the, the model, the model illustrated in the previous slide, and these, are, these were the parameters we obtained to, to for this specific grade of polycarbonate. And uh, concerning the effect on the, of the temperature, we had to compute the activation energy that is also given in the, in the slide. A and uh, by performing these tests, we'll, we were able to obtain the model that will be used in open form to perform, to perform the, the simulation. Uh, the first case study, uh, it's uh, the half of the profile is illustrated in the, in the top uh, picture. And uh, as, uh, as the, the initial profile I, I showed you, uh, it has different thicknesses and uh, ranging from 1.5 to 0 0.6. The profile seems quite simple, but it, it's quite hard to produce. And before uh, using the modeling approach, the company, uh, 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 Soprefa, that uh, 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 um, is the company that we uh, cooperate with in this project, they tried for several, several times to do it just on experimental basis. And, uh, and uh, they didn't manage to succeed, so we, we decided, uh, we agreed to test, to check if with, uh, with this modeling code we were, were able to, to obtain better results. Uh, on, the, on the bottom figure, we, we can see the, the, the typical flow channel where the material flows from, and this is the geometry that will be adapted to reach the desired flow distribution. Uh, the boundary conditions uh, uh, used in the, in, the, in the problems, mainly the outlet velocity is 2.5 meters per minute. Um, the temperature is imposed at the, at the inlet and, uh, uh, and at, at the walls we use a slightly lower temperature. The, this is one of the recommendations for the company uh, when working with the, with the polycarbonate they usually do that to, uh, to facilitate the manipulation of the profile. And mainly typical boundary conditions used in, in flow problems. Uh, before advancing to, 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 do, to the studies, we checked, we, we performed the mesh sensitivity study to figure out which would be the mesh refinement required to obtain accurate results. And in, in order uh, to, to, to evaluate that, we computed several different uh, parameters. Um, uh, in, in this graph, we have the average velocity at the different subsections. Uh, in this one, the pressure drop and the normalized outlet temperature. And uh, uh, all the results are normalized with, uh, with the results obtained with the last mesh, with the most refined mesh. And we can see from these results that uh, the differences between mesh two and mesh three are not significant. So we decided to use MESH2 to, to perform the studies. Uh, this is the first, the best trial obtained at the company. Uh, uh, I didn't mention that before, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll hopefully it was clear, we're modeling just half of the profile since the, there is a, a symmetry plane. Uh, but the, the first trial is, is this one, illustrated in this slide. Uh, in, in this figure, uh, the first, the best uh, attempt made by the company, and you can see from the f velocity distribution is quite unbalanced. Uh, by adjusting the, the geometry, we were able to improve slightly the, the flow distribution. You can see uh, a, a slightly improvement, and that was done by adjusting the location where the channel, the flow channel converges. So we have here different cross sections of the flow channel, and by adjusting the, the convergence and the, and the thickness of, of different regions, we are able to uh, uh, direct the flow to different regions. But you can see from the, this the distribution of objective function, we have mainly an excess of flow on the uh, uh, first elemental section, and the remaining of, of the tool has a reduced flow, much lower than, than we would uh, uh, require. And it was, it was really not possible to improve a lot the, the flow distribution. Uh, 
so uh, we adopted a different a different strategy that was mainly uh, uh, using a flow separator. The flow separator is something that will promote the existence in the flow channel of independent flow streams that are much easier to control in terms of flow distribution and then the, the, those different flow streams merge right before the, the final part of, of uh, the outlet of, of the cross section promoting the welding, promoting the appearance of a weld line, but uh, uh, will uh, make it easier to, to, to obtain a better flow distribution. And in this case, you, you can see from these trials that we're able to reach uh, a state in terms of flow distribution that is uh, much better than, than the initial one. And this can be also quantified, illustrated by the evolution of the global objective function that is reducing and the, the last trial is much better than the initial one. The, and you, you can see in this, in this picture uh, uh, the, the line working. Uh, uh, to be honest, it didn't work exactly perfectly on the first trial, but uh, with a, just a few adjustments, it allowed to obtain the desired profile under the required thicknesses. And you can see here, uh, this is the extrusion die, the tool we designed first calibrator and the second calibrator that is open just to illustrate the passage of, of the, the profile. And we're able to obtain uh, the required uh, profile with the desired geometry. In order to evaluate the, the, the accuracy of the code, we have, we have uh, collected samples, produced samples, and we have used, we cut the samples and the cross section and we, we, we measure the cross section section using a, a optical device and uh, with the proper software we're able to measure the different areas corresponding to the different subsections of the numerical model. And for each subsection uh, we, we monitor the relative area and we compare the values with the, with, with the numerical predictions. And as you can see from the results, uh, they're, they're quite similar. There are no, not many differences which give, gives us confidence uh, on the accuracy of the codes uh, we have to model these kind of problems. Uh, moving to the second case study, as I mentioned, in this case we'll be uh, manipulating boundary conditions. How? Uh, this is a, a pool cover profile, a swimming pool cover profile, uh, and uh, at a certain point the company had, uh, um, uh, they were very close to the solution in terms of flow distribution, but the amount of flow in these inner walls that are thinner than the others were, uh, was smaller than the required. So they, they, uh, on the production, they became thinner than the, than the desired value. So uh, since we we're very close to the solution, we decided to test something uh, uh, different that is illustrated uh, in, in, uh, in, in this slide. Instead of uh, uh, adjusting, modifying the geometry, since the tool uh, we could have different iters along the, the profile contour, uh, if we are able to adjust the temperature uh, of the different of the different iters in a differential manner, we would be able to control the local temperature that will affect the viscosity of the material and the resistance to the flow. Since the adjustments uh, that were required were not that big we would be able to, we expect that we would be able to obtain, uh, uh, to balance, to improve the flow distribution. Uh, again, the boundary conditions recommended uh, by the company, the, the, the ones they, they, they used uh, uh, with, uh, with different values. And uh, you, you, you can see from the uniform, when we use a uniform uh, temperature distribution, we obtain an excess of flow in the in the certain region and a redu reduced flow in the inner walls of the profile. And by adjusting in a different uh, uh, the, the temperature distribution along the profile contour, we were even able to have an excess of flow in those regions, which showed us that we were able to 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 by just by doing that by adjusting the the temperature, we're able to improve the flow distribution. Uh, this slide illustrates the, 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 the initial trial with, with uniform temperature distribution and the last trial, the last numerical trial we used, 
that is, as you can see from the velocity distribution, is much better in terms of uh, float balance. Uh, and the, objective, the global objective function clear uh, quantifies that, showing uh, a, a significant improvement from the initial trial uniform f temperature distribution to the last one. And uh, you can see in, in this, again, in this case, the, uh, or the extrusion line operating uh, uh, and producing the desired profile, the swimming pool cover profile, with the required dimensions from the cover. Uh, we did also, uh, we followed the same procedure to, to assess the, the predictions of the numerical code, assess experimentally the predictions of the numerical code. Again, we collected samples of the production, measure the, 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 the dimensions of the profile, uh, the, the cross-section areas of the different elemental sections, and uh, we compared the results with the numerical predictions th of the concerning the relative areas. And you, you can see in also in these results that, that there are not many differences between the, predict the numerical predictions and the experimental measurements which give us additional confidence uh, uh, for the code. So this takes me to the final conclusions of, uh, of, the, uh, of this work. And uh, we've shown that we, we have a design methodology for profile extrusion dyes based on open source software. Uh, we, we developed a code to be able to model uh, the flow of polymer melts. And that code was uh, experimentally assessed using two case studies, two industrial case studies, uh, uh, based on the um, uh, on two different profiles and using different approaches to promote the optimization. And I, I, I hope you agree with me, the results obtained were quite excellent. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. and. I would be glad to answer your questions if you have anything. Thank you.